Hey guys, today's video is part of the Gen AI and LLM projects playlist. And in this playlist, we have some hands-on projects built with LLMs. Now, recently, we learned about Meta's open source Llama 3 model and its awesome capabilities. And this is why today, I want to take things a step further. You probably know by now that if we have to use an LLM for a specific use case, we need to fine tune it with our own custom data sets. And this makes the model highly effective and accurate for our data set. So today, we're going to fine tune Llama 3 with a data set and then compare its accuracy for a specific task with a non-fine tuned model. I'm taking you through my Google Colab notebook and I'll be leaving a link to this in the description of this video. We first import the PyTorch library, a popular open source machine learning framework, primarily used for tasks involving deep neural networks. PyTorch provides tensor computation with strong GPU acceleration capabilities. Then we utilize PyTorch's CUDA module to check the compute capability of the available CUDA-enabled GPU device. CUDA is a parallel computing platform and application programming interface model created by NVIDIA. It allows software developers to use a CUDA-enabled GPU for general purpose processing, including deep learning tasks. The get device capability function returns the major and minor versions of the CUDA compute capability supported by the GPU device. Then we install the unslot library from a GitHub repository using pip. The exclamation pip install command is quite common in Google Colab environments, and it's used to install Python packages. The specified GitHub URL points to the repository containing the unslot library. And the at git plus syntax specifies that the library should be installed directly from the Git repository. Then we install multiple Python packages using pip. The no depths flag indicates that only the specified packages should be installed without considering their dependencies. Xformers enables us to work with models of various transformer-based architectures. Then we have TRL, which is Transformer Representation Learning. So representation learning focuses on learning meaningful representations of data, which can be used for downstream tasks like classification on regression. Accelerate is a PyTorch-based library designed to simplify the process of distributed training for deep learning models. It provides high-level APIs and utilities for distributed training across multiple GPUs or even multiple machines. Bits and bytes is for low-level bit manipulation or byte-level operations. The most important one here is PEFT, which is parameter-efficient fine-tuning. This is the one we're going to use directly for fine-tuning tasks. If you don't know how fine-tuning works and what's PEFT and the various techniques available to us in PEFT like QLoRa, LoRa, etc., then you must subscribe to this channel because all of this content will come in the LM Concepts playlist on my channel where we're discussing all the concepts related to the hands-on projects that we're building in this particular playlist. All right, then we import fast language model from Unsloth, which is going to help us import our Lama 3 model soon. And we also get Torch. Then we set the maximum length of the input sequence that the language model can process to 2048. The dtype parameter then specifies the data type of the model's parameters and inputs. In our case, it's set to none, which means that the data type will be automatically detected based on the hardware and other factors. Alternatively, you can specify other data types like torch.float16 for half precision floating point format like we've done in previous videos of this series. This line defines a variable load in 4-bit with a value of true. This parameter controls whether to use 4-bit quantization to reduce memory usage. Quantization is a technique used to reduce the memory footprint and computational complexity of neural networks by representing parameters with fewer bits. We've learned about quantization in great detail in our quantization video from the LM Concepts playlist. Then we use fast language model that we got from Unsloth and pass multiple arguments to it. Model name specifies the model to be loaded and the next three values like max sequence length, dtype, and load in 4-bit have already been defined by us and we're simply going to pass them here. The method returns two objects, model and tokenizer, where we'll now be able to access our pre-trained language model with the model object and tokenizer corresponds to the language model, which is used to convert text into tokens understandable by the model. This line installs the datasets library via pip. Datasets is a hugging face library that provides an easy to use interface for accessing and working with various datasets commonly used in natural language processing tasks. Then we import three things. SFT trainer from TRL module. We already know that TRL stands for text response generation with large language models. It's a library for fine-tuning language models for text generation tasks. And SFE Trainer is tailored for training models in a self-feeding manner, where the generated output of the model is fed back into the input for training. This approach is particularly useful for tasks like dialogue generation or other generated tasks, where 
the model needs to learn to produce coherent and contextually relevant responses. Training arguments from the Transformers module. So Transformers is a popular library, as you know, for natural language processing developed by Hugging Face. Training arguments is a class used to define training parameters and settings for fine grained models. Load dataset from the datasets module. So this function is used to load datasets from the Hugging Face datasets repository or local files. It's part of the datasets library. Then we set the maximum sequence length for tokenization 2048. Then we set the URL for the dataset to be loaded in the URL variable. As you can see, the dataset is in JSON lines format and is hosted on the Hugging Face model hub. We can even see what the dataset looks like. And if you just put the URL from the Colab in your browser, it'll directly download this dataset for you. Then we use a load dataset function that we imported from the dataset library, and we specify the format of the dataset to be JSON. The split parameter specifies which split of the dataset to load. A dataset can be divided into multiple splits, such as training, validation, and test sets. The split parameter allows you to specify which split you want to load. Split is equal to train indicates that we want to load the train split of the dataset. This means we're loading the portion of the dataset intended for training the model. Our generate text function takes in an input text, which is the input text for text generation. And inside this function, we tokenize the text using the tokenizer method. You will notice the return tensors is equal to PT parameter, and this indicates that the tokenizer should return PyTorch tensors as output. Q.0 sends the resulting tensors to the GPU for processing. Then we call the generate function leveraging our model. We pass in the inputs and the max new tokens to be generated in the response. And the output that we receive, we store it in the outputs variable. And the next line, we just decode this generated output and print it. If you notice here, we're extracting only the first output in the outputs array with the index of 0. And skip special tokens is equal to true indicates that special tokens like EOS should be skipped. Then we generate text for the model without any training, and we ask it to list the top five most popular movies of all time. And you can see the result isn't very impressive, so we will have to train it. So for training, we will first prepare our model by getting a PEF model from fast language model. And we have multiple fields here, like the model name, R, which has the number of heads in the attention mechanism, target modules, which specifies the list of modules to apply modifications to. And these are the specific parts of the transformer architecture. Then you have LoRa specific parameters like the LoRa alpha parameter and the dropout rate for LoRa, and whether to use the rank specified LoRa, which is uh, in use RS LoRa, and configurations for loft queue. In case you're not familiar with fine tuning, PEFT, and LoRa, like I mentioned, don't worry, all of these concepts will be soon in the LLM concepts playlist on this channel, so you can watch that and come back again to this video. Then we initialize our trainer with the model, the data set, the sequence length, value, the tokenizer defined above, and various training arguments like per device train batch size, which specifies how many samples are processed in one forward and backward pass on each GPU. The gradient accumulation steps specifies how many batches are accumulated before performing a backward pass. The warm-up steps specifies how many steps the learning rate will increase during the warm-up phase. Max steps specifies the maximum number of steps the training will run for. FP16 specifies whether to use float 16 data type for training, which can speed up training on GPUs that support it. BF16 specifies whether to use mixed precision training with bfloat16, similar to FP16, but using bfloat16 data type. Logging step specifies the frequency of logging during training. And output there specifies the directory where training logs and model checkpoints will be saved. Optim is the optimizer type and specifies the optimizer to use for training. Weight decay specifies the strength of L2 regularization applied to model parameters. LR scheduler type specifies the type of learning rate scheduler used during training. Seed specifies the random seed used for initializing model weights and shuffling data sets. Then we finally test the model after training and ask it the same question, which is list the top five most popular movies of all time. And now we get a proper list like The Shawshank Redemption, Godfather, etc., which are really great movies. All right, this was it. We have seen how to find new Llama 3, which is a really new and killer model by Meta. You can deploy it and use it for your own use case and directly modify the code I shared with you. Just make sure you create your own copy of it. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel because you get awesome content for learning, all for free. And do share this with your friends who are also learning about LLMs right now. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.